This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. As we welcome in, again, Matt Stinchcomb into the program, former Georgia Bulldog. Matt, you know a little something about playing in, in a professional stadium. For the guys that haven't, what's it going to be like for their first time tomorrow in AT&T Stadium? I don't know. You know, this is the SEC. The SEC stadiums oftentimes seat more than NFL stadiums, and a lot of times are a lot more engaged from a fan base perspective. So I don't know that, you know, either one of these teams, I mean, you think about, um, where the Razorbacks play, where the Aggies play, Kyle Field, Razorback Stadium, he's sitting there going, I mean, it ain't going to be any bigger than those spots, that's for sure. It's got a roof. I mean, maybe if that's uh, – the punters might be distracted, but maybe the <laughs> punt returners and kick returners. Otherwise, these guys are probably going to be like, ah, yeah, I mean, it's got a big screen. we got big screens. I don't know that uh, a lot of other conferences – uh, some of the other schools, maybe they might walk into these pro stadiums and think, "Wow, man, this this place is immense." And, and the SEC, kind of par for the course, might be the loudest that stadium gets all season is when they play this this game in there because of the the fan bases and the passion that comes at the collegiate level. Yeah, there's a lot of college football fans that would definitely uh, agree with your sentiments, Matt. I, I wonder. I know you've watched film of both teams. When it comes to Arkansas, what what differences did you notice on the line of scrimmage, particularly in the offensive line, for the Razorbacks that you may not have seen the first three games? Well, you know, I think a couple of things will help. Uh, one, I do think that they're getting better in some spots. I think. You know, they'll continue to get better at right tackle, or can at least. Um, you know, left tackle has been a little bit of a, a revolving door, it looks like, with they're trying to get this manual kid in there and keep him in there. Meanwhile, you know, uh, you know Shambly's kind of filling in spot duty. Um, but that's that's not ideal uh, to not have a preset rotation, a known rotation, oftentimes a rotation period, frankly. I mean, if you're not running a tempo offense, and you don't have guys that are literally 1A, 1B, then you want the same five out there because you need them working together. Um, but they got to be more tied together. We talked about that earlier this week. We we're watching them, that uh, especially guard to guard, at center guard or guard center guard, you have to know what's happening, especially when those guards are uncovered. You get a lot of odd fronts, just three down linemen. So the center's covered, the tackles are covered, and your guards are uncovered. You know, you have to know who you're working to. It's a little bit easier versus these four-man fronts because when a guy's lined up six inches from your face, there's a good chance that's the person you're supposed to block. <laughs> but when he's off the ball and you got a couple of guys just kind of floating around, we all got to know, okay, so who, who are we working to here? If it's, if it's me and the adjacent lineman on the guy that's kind of close to us, the down lineman, then who else are we going to go get? Because we both can't just block him. And there are instances – a couple of key spots, really, where, you know, it's a walk-in touchdown in the red zone uh, on the little shovel pass with the option. If we just pull for the right backside linebacker, instead we get distracted by the play side and we get tackled for about a three-yard gain. Stuff like that that has to get cleaned up. The good news is it can. It's just a matter of, of communicating and understanding the assignment. You know, what is it I'm supposed to be doing? These other guys, for AM, they're pretty salty on defense. It's going to be hard enough to block them when you know who to block. But if you don't know who to block, it doesn't matter how well. If you block the wrong guy, you might as well have not even been on the field on that snap. they got to get that fixed. Hey, Matt, give us an idea, because I know you know, about the cohesion between running backs and offensive linemen. Rocket Sanders has been out for Arkansas. They've got good running backs behind him, but I just wonder about the familiarity between running backs and linemen and how that plays into the running game. Yeah, I think a lot of that, you know, it's unspoken. And you try, it doesn't change the way you play up front, that's for sure. But a good back can make a line look even better. A good back, a great back can make an average line look really good. Uh, and vice versa. Uh, although I will say it's, it's a lot harder for it to work the other way around because you can block your tail off up front. If you got a bag that can't find the hole, then it's not going to look very good. A lot of times you'll come out of games 
and I will see or hear that the offensive line's being impugned. Oh, man, we just didn't block very well up front. Didn't run the ball well today. Well, and then you watch it, and you're going, no, nah, they blocked lights out up front. You got a running back that's running with his eyes closed. Or you know, just can't break a tackle. That's an issue. And obviously, the more talented you are in the back end, the better they can make you look. I think Rocket Sanders, when he's good to go, one of the best backs in the conference, maybe maybe the best back in the conference uh, when he's going good, uh, that can really help. And guys know that up front. You know, you, it's a momentum game, and especially in the ground game. If you get going on the ground and your guy is, is making some cuts, he's breaking some tackles, he's maybe picking up two or three more yards at the end of run, then that changes things. That, that juices you up a little bit. And I, I do think that that matters. That, that can actually be really additive to the run game element of your offense. Matt Stinchcomb with us here on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. Matt, a couple of games ago, Brady Latham, a team captain, didn't have his best game, uh, four or five penalties in the game. What do you do as a lineman when you have a game that, um, you know, things don't go your way, too many flags, false starts, holding penalties, the line as a whole doesn't have a performance? What's your role as a captain? How do you repair that? How do you rebound from that kind of performance? Because – Brady had a much better game the following outing. Yeah, step one's always owning it. Um, when you're a, a veteran guy, when you're sought to be a leader, you don't duck it. And I, and I doubt very seriously. It's just not the guys up front. You might not have a ton of vocal leaders, but it's usually that room's got a ton of accountability uh, to one another. It has to, but also to the team, the, the broader team. One thing, though, that you just can't have, like a hold, holds are going to happen. And, you know, people talk about this, D-linemen especially, they love to bring this up. Oh, you you call holding on every play, (laughs) Um, which is total bull. Um, But they like to say it makes them feel better. But the the fact that you have a holding penalty or, you know, every once in a while it's like illegal hands to the face or something, I don't know, chop block, you don't see that very often. But – those are almost, uh, those are, we'll call them effort penalties. They happen in the course of the play. It's the procedural stuff, the pre snap stuff that you just flat out can't have. And especially when you've got stability at quarterback. It's one thing if you're jockeying guys in and out, and there's a lot of systems where, hey, we need a runner on this snap, so put another quarterback in. You know, AM saw that last week. The Robbie Ashford kid comes in at quarterback. Cadences change. You know, those guys don't always call it the same way. And if you're on the road, maybe you're on the clap, so that's different. But when you're at home, you know, if it's a color number, color number, you know, ready, go, or whatever it is, that cadence isn't the same. And so sometimes you you just got to hold in there better. Arkansas hasn't had to deal with that. You know, the procedure, the pre-snap process, by and large, is coming from the same guy. And if that's the case, then you flat out just can't burn five yards. And, and that you just you have to be more focused. It literally is just a mental lapse. The other stuff, the holding, you don't want it, and you certainly don't invite it. It's such a costly penalty. At, at the same time, you, you can you know kind of grit your teeth and swallow hard and be like ah, but it's the pre-snap stuff that, that is a real killer because it's in, it's entirely avoidable. Matt Stinchcomb with us here on the McCarty Daniel Hotline. Matt, you referenced the stability kind of at quarterback for the, the Razorback squad, and we had that clip at the top of our open. I, I wonder your perspective. Can can KJ afford at any point this season to have an off game and they win, or is it just one of those things that he has to play out of his mind each game based on what Arkansas has for them to be in games this year? You know, I think that uh, – the defense has done a good job. You look at the turnover margin, the takeaways. If you're able to get the ball back, then you're always giving your offense a better chance um, just because that's a momentum play. And it's not even always great field position. doesn't have to be. But you get a short field, and it's a quick change for the opposing team's defense. You know, that can be a spark. You know, as far as, you know, especially when the Sanders kid's been out of the lineup, there's been a lot on K.J. Jefferson. And this offense, I think rightfully, you know, uh, wisely, has put a lot on Jefferson from a decision-making standpoint. He's making decisions pre-snap. You know, a lot of systems, they'll have the RPO. You know, it's watch the O part in the RPO, that option part, that you better have a quarterback that's making great decisions. There is a ton of after-snap decision-making in this offense. And 
you watch it and you're going, the ball seems to go where it should. He's made great decisions um, by and large. I mean, we're talking, you know, and even talking with the coaches, they're saying he's in the high 80s. That's incredible. Uh, and this is after the snap type stuff where the defense is trying to make you wrong and you're making a point to, to, to exploit that. Not an easy thing to do. So there's a lot on that kid's plate. You know, you got third and long. You're getting exotic blitz packages. You don't always hold up in protection. You don't have, you know, your your front line uh, running back in there from a protection standpoint. So there's a ton of leakage. You know, there's not a ton of familiarity at wide receiver. Uh, you know, you got a, a true freshman at tight end who's really emerging as a target. True freshman at tight end. I think that's enough to tell you that, you know, and you all know this, there's not a lot of familiar faces in the huddle for that guy. And so because of it, there's a ton on his shoulders. That said, you know, I don't know that if you get Sanders back and he's in that lineup, you tie things together up front, you continue to emerge in the passing game, especially on the receiving end. You know, those guys, I think, by the end of the season, maybe even midpoint, they can round into form to where it doesn't have to be so much on, hey, K.J., you got to make a play for us right here, bud. But they, I don't know that they're there just yet. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.